Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, many of you have encouraged me and asked me to keep posting and I'm glad to be back and thanks for being patient with me with the hiatus. I wanted to talk about gallstones. It's a very common topic. Everybody that walks on the street, about 12% will have gallstones. What are gallstones? And what does the gallbladder do? And I'll explain that. But essentially the liver sits here and under the liver is a small sac called the gallbladder. Gallstones are important because sometimes they can cause complications. People who have gallstone disease also have increased incidence of heart disease, cancer, and some increased mortality. The older we get, the more complications we can get from gallstones. And my goal today is to give you a sense of what gallstones can do, but the big message is most times they should be left alone. Pregnancy can be a risk factor because of hormonal status etc associated with pregnancy rapid weight loss is a risk factor and people who are on tpn which is iv food can get gallstones here's a photograph of gallstones there's different types one is cholesterol the other one is what's called pigment stones because that's a different way that the stones are formed and and the other one can be mixed both with pigment and with cholesterol the anatomy of the gallbladder and liver is that the liver is an organ here the blood goes through the liver, the liver just purifies and extracts things that, needs to, that need to get outside. It also makes digestive juices like, gall, uh, like bile that sit in the gallbladder. And from the gallbladder, there's a, uh, a drainage tube called the bile duct that drains into the, the portion beyond the stomach. These stones then accumulate in the gallbladder. And as I said, there's the cholesterol stones, there's the pigment stones, there are some other rarer stones that can be formed and they can be classified whether if they're in the gallbladder or somehow they made their escape from the gallbladder into the bile pipe. There can be also a smaller variety of gallstones called biliary sludge. There are certain drugs that can predispose to increased gallstones such as estrogen containing medications, cholesterol lowering medications and certain antibiotics like ceftriaxone which are given in the hospital or octreotide, these are drugs. There are some diseases states that are associated more with stones such as insulin resistance which is pre-diabetes, diabetes. If the small bowel is diseased, if there's spinal cord disease, fatty liver disease or celiac disease, all of these can make people more prone to developing gallstones. By the way, coffee seems to be protective. This diagram gives you a sense of some gen there are some genetic factors as well. So within the condition and the setting of these different conditions that I've described, there are certain genetic factors which seem to be making people more susceptible because normally bile is thicker liquid or a thinner liquid. And sometimes that as it starts thickening, that's when gallstones start forming. So what do gallstones then do? Most patients the gallstones do nothing. In other words, 75% of the time it's asymptomatic. The second thing that happens is when the gallstones get stuck at the neck of the gallbladder, which is that portion that I was showing, showing you, the diagram that's up on the screen, the neck of the gallbladder, the stones get stuck and then the gallbladder starts getting inflamed. That's when you get what's called cholecystitis. Sometimes the stone gets stuck in the neck and pushes onto the bile duct, which is right next door and can cause some blockage. That's called Mirizzi syndrome. Sometimes the stone can get, bobbed or get bobs in the bile duct and blocks the bile duct and that can predispose to infection or cause jaundice. So that's called common bile duct stone. Sometimes the stone can kind of eat its way through the gallbladder and fall and erode its way into the adjoining bowel. And very rarely, long-standing uh, stone disease can cause gallbladder cancer by, by means of irritation. However, the big thing that I want to emphasize is the majority of the time, gallstones don't cause any symptoms. So it's, and it's common to see that on ultrasounds or CAT scans that you may get for other reasons. So in other words, if there's no symptoms or no pain or no discomfort or no jaundice, these would be the main symptoms of gallstone disease. I would leave the gallstones alone. Sometimes patients ask me if I have diarrhea, am I, is it because of my gallbladder or gallstones? And that typically is not a gallstone symptom. Sometimes in a small group of patients, if there's history of lung and heart transplantation and in children, 
it may be even if they're asymptomatic they should be taken out but in the rest it would be better to leave the stones there and watch and be observant for these symptoms so I think how we deal with these complications can be an entirely different set of discussion but the big messages that I wanted to get out is that it's common to have gallstones about 12 percent of us will have it only in about 25 percent of the time will it or the people who have it will it cause any symptoms or problems and the symptoms and mechanisms of symptoms I've described and uh, very rarely do you take it out especially uh, if there are no symptoms in people who have lung transplant heart transplant or in children because they can you know they can have complications later down the life so thank you for uh, encouraging me. I'll continue to post every few weeks. Please send me feedback and thank you again for all the uh, comments that you leave for me when you meet me uh, or uh, on the internet.